it's just like crushing an egg. Or uh, you ever hit a melon with a hammer? It's like, like the twist. You ever do the twist? It's like doing the twist. One, two, three, and crush that hit. Hey, Kensu, congratulations on winning the 11 Second Club for this month. My name is Nicole Hare. I am a supervising character animator over at Halon Entertainment. Um, I've been in the industry for over 28 years. And um, yeah, my website is NicoleHare.com. All right, let's take a look at this. I love this animation. I think it's really a fun piece. So couple things that I, I really like about this. I like the simplicity of the background. I like that you're not you're not distracting from the animation by having an overcomplicated background. There's information back there. I can see, you know, the tree and the fence and there's info there, but it's not distracting, which is really nice. Um, I also really like the fact that you're utilizing the space in your scene. You're actively having your character start from behind this horse's leg, come forward and actually utilize the whole space, including having him flying off at the very end, which I think is really smart. But let's take a look at this really quickly together, and then we'll go into the animation itself. It's just like crushing an egg, right? You ever hit a melon with a hammer? It's like... Like the twist. You ever do the twist? Like the twist. One, two, three. Crush that. It's just such a fun personality. He's the voice versus the bird that you've got. Fun design, but the voice versus the bird, they fit so well together. And that's just one of those things that is really making this animation shine. All right, I'm going to mute this real quick. So, the birdie comes in. Love that you're you're tracking your arcs in here. You're switching though some things. Like here, when I'm looking at it, I'm I'm mostly focusing on the body, and and that's really where you want your audience's eye, which is really cool. But I'm watching just a couple little things that are standing out to me, and one of them actually has to do with the leg that's up in the air right here. So when I look at this leg, I'm just going to draw over this. Let's grab a different color that shows up maybe a little better. Maybe the screen will show up a little better. Yeah, that shows up nicely. So when I watch this leg as it's coming in, all right, we're animating on twos, which is a very traditional way of working. I know that this leg is coming here. I know from the arc of the leg. I'm looking at the overall. But what's happening visually is the foot is actually swapping space visually with this other leg. And the reason for that is if you watch how the other leg is moving, you can see that it's coming up. It feels like this leg that I'm drawing in the pink, it feels like that leg should be actually switching over to this side. And it's sort of a twofold thing. It's one, the fact that the leg, the foot is spread out and the other one is curled. And then in this one frame, you're swapping the foot that's curled and the foot that is um, straight. If you went in and allowed in one frame, so let's say on this frame here, let me erase the pink leg. If you allowed that leg to have just a tiny little bit more drag behind. So even if the foot is right exactly where it is, but if you allowed those that foot to be a little bit more open for just one more frame, then what would happen is when it comes up here and goes into here, you're saying to the audience, hey, my foot is doing this. All right. So it would make it just a tiny little bit easier for our audience's eye to really follow what that foot is doing and not swap. So you can see how just putting in that extra one frame of drag on those toes really helps showcase that that leg is switching space rather than the visual one frame switch. You're, you're allowing the audience to follow it along on what exactly is happening between those two feet. So it's just adding one more breakdown in there. All right, and then on the other foot here, when it comes up, use it green for that foot. 
we're here, we're flat, and then you're coming up here. If you do the same sort of idea where on this frame coming up, you're just allowing the feet to have just a little bit more of an open into there, it just allows just a little bit more drag. So I love the poppiness of the animation, but it's just adding a little bit more clarity into the limbs as to which limb is doing what. And like right here, you're getting that, that nice drag behind here that is helping really showcase where that foot is going. Now, the other thing that I would recommend is right here, when that foot is coming down, put a little bit of a drag, sorry, wrong color. Put a little tiny bit of a drag on that toe so that that way you're allowing, once again, you're allowing our audience to really see what's going on here. So maybe here you open it up just a little bit more, add in a little bit of a drag here, and then that will then allow the audience to follow what the character's feet are doing. And it's just a general idea of allowing a little bit more overlap, a little bit more drag on those feet as you're coming through. Like here, it's coming in, maybe a tiny little bit of an overlap drag on those toes as they come down. Same thing here. So I would just go through the feet and see if you can add in just a little bit of extra drag, which will then help subtly help increase the, that contact with the ground and help make the audience see just a little bit more clearly what foot is doing what thing throughout the animation. All right. I love the contact he has with the horse. I've got to say, that's honestly one of my favorite things on this animation. All right, comes in here, foot sliding a little bit here. If he's going to do it, I'd pick up and do just a little bit. If you're going to have the slide in there, make it intentional. So just a tiny little bit of a, of a shifting where the, those toes have a little bit of a flex coming down. So you just get just a tiny little bit flex and then moving those toes over comes in here. Both feet are doing the exact same thing. So maybe this foot, drag it behind just a little bit more. Maybe not curl those toes up as quickly. Just tiny little thing. The other foot. I like the other foot curling up, but maybe just give it a little tiny bit of a straighter toe. And then it comes up and as he floats out, which is cool. All right, now, so the bird overall, I think, is working really, really nicely. It's really a, about those feet. I want to look at his, his dialogue real quick. It's just, just like crushing an egg, right? You, hit, you ever hit a melon with a hammer? Crush the egg. I would put a little egg. Egg. So I'm what I'm doing is I'm saying I'm crushing an egg. An egg. I'm feeling the palate, the top palate being touched by the tongue. So I'm feel uh, it's like crushing an egg. So the tongue here, when he says egg, I pull it up just a little bit, add a little tiny bit more life in that tongue on the inside of the mouth. He's right up in frame. So if you if you go in and you listen to what he's saying, it's like crushing. It's like, 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 like. so a little bit of tongue motion here where the tongue is coming up. If you imagine him saying the like, just adding in a little bit of overlap in there on that. It's just like crushing an egg, right? Egg. I love that he's. I love that that extra little head turn where he's like, uh, 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 where he's just, you know, turning away and you're you're really listening to the dialogue and you're going, oh, he's not 100% sure what's going on in here. So he's turning his head. He's, he's listening to his inside voice and doing what we do, which is that turning away where we're thinking about something and we're, we're trying to clear our visual field and really go into our thoughts. And that's great. 
you ever hit a melon with a hand? Now, put a little tiny bit of a drag on that tongue as it comes down on the word melon. Yeah. It's like, 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 here, like, get that tongue coming down. Like, like, twist. You ever do the twist? Push that. It is. It's just like yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. All right. So, bird wise, it's very subtle things. It's, it's. I would spend a little bit more time on the feet. I'd spend a little bit more time on what the tongue is doing inside of the mouth. A general rule of thumb is, and you've got a little bit of it in here, but a general rule of thumb when it comes to animation is. If you can if you can see inside of the mouth, animate it. All right. Because that tiny little bit of motion on the tongue actually really goes a long way in advancing the sense of reality that the character has. We use our tongues when we talk, we use the tongue so much to develop the sounds that we're we're utilizing. So absolutely you've got a little bit in there i think you can push some of those phonemes just a little bit more all right is this just like crushing an egg right you ever hit a melon with a hammer it's like like fist you're doing twist i love that contact one, two, three. Hey, push that and the anticipation you've got in here where that wing comes up Love that. That's such that's such a pretty arc of the wing coming down into that. I think that's really pretty. And he, that fly out. Now, the thing that stands out to me is I would love to see a little bit of motion on the horse. All right. You've got this really nice moment here where you're coming in and you're crushing that egg and it's great or the, the walnut and it's great. But before that horse's leg moves, the horse is on screen dead. There's no weight shifting. There's no life. It doesn't need to have a lot. And I know you're doing the traditional animation thing. And in traditional animation, we can get away with things that are static on screen for a lot longer. But if I was going to go in and do anything, I would spend a little bit more time on the horse's leg. Just a little bit of life that, you know, little tiny step maybe at the beginning, just a little tiny bit of a weight shifting, because what that is going to do is that is going to allow our animal, our horse, to all of a sudden have extra life. And that's what we're actively trying to get into our animation. Like when I just look at what it is doing. So I'm going to hide the bird real quick. Um, when I look at what the horse is doing, just the horse, if you watch it until it stomps the nut, it's not doing really anything. There's no life in that. But as soon as it moves right here at about frame 207, as soon as it moves, all of a sudden, wow, there is something there. So I would say everything before that, I just put a little tiny little shift, like that little subtle shift that you've got between 207 and about right about here where he picks it up, those nine frames. It's amazing how much life that adds. All right. And crush that egg. All right. He comes in here. You're just, you don't have a lot of weight on here. Um, don't forget the rest of the horse. <laughs> okay. I know that the rest of the horse is not drawn in here, but don't forget that the rest of the horse exists. When he puts his weight over here, what you want to do is you're going to want to hold this for just a second longer. Right now you're on this particular moment. Uh, for about four frames three, four friends. For something to truly read to us, it takes a minimum of really, honestly, it takes a minimum of about eight frames. So in those eight frames, when that leg comes over here, 
what you can do is you can add in just a little bit of motion up top. So if you imagine that that all of this animation here is delayed by just a couple frames. All right, so we're still here. If you imagine the rest of that horse's leg coming in and maybe having a little bit of a shift in his ankle, just a little bit of a push down there. All of a sudden, what has happened is the weight of the horse that is above this leg has shifted over. So it's a plant shift lift sort of thing. In this case, what you want to do is you're lifting up that foot. The weight has shifted over to this side. So all of your weight is shifted over. He goes over there and then that foot then can lift. So that weight shift here should actually really be happening Probably, let's see what he's saying here. So when he, when this guy's counting, when he's going one, two, three, what you want to do with the horse is the horse is like, yes, I can do this. I can do this. And the horse is getting ready. So when this guy is counting down, so countdown, then the horse should be doing a weight shift. Countdown equals weight shift. All right. So he's counting down one, two, three, that becomes our anticipation. Two, three, my weight's over. I lift my foot. Boom. I slam it down. Now where you can see that is in the ankle and in this tiny little part of the lower leg. So on the horse, on what you are always thinking about is this right here. That's actually your ankle. They're walking on their toe. So when they are shifting here, put tiny, a tiny little bit of a shift over here and a little bit, I always overdraw just so you know, so don't go as far as I'm drawing. Keep it subtle, but that life, that's what we're trying to get in there. So we put a tiny little bit of the imaginary hip moving over, which will then allow that foot to have a slight shift. All right. One, two, three, slam. That slam happens. When that slam happens, we shift the weight over, hold this for a couple more frames, like double your amount of time, so that we're really getting that sense that that weight has shifted. Remember that whole mass of the back end of the horse has just shifted over. Stomp, maybe even when he stomps, maybe shoot out a couple little um, pieces of walnut off onto the sides, just a little bit like when he slammed it, it's this like big explosion. And then when he lifts up that foot and moves over, you'd still have like little pieces, but you would pick up basically what you've got. So the big thing that's standing out to me, I really love this animation. I think it's, it's super fun. But the thing that's standing out to me on this as something that would help plus your animation more is adding a little bit of weight and life to the horse's leg and allowing the horse's leg when it hits to really read that it's hitting. Right now, it's so fast that you're losing the actual impact of that horse's leg going down. And also when that Walnut gets crushed, what would be cool would be to see a little bit, doesn't need to be a lot, but a little bit of extra debris popping out from behind that horse's hoof. So we get a better sense of what really truly did happen. All right. Overall, I love the personality that you've gotten into this bird. I think it's super fun. Um, and I, it's a well-deserved win. All right. It's just if I was if I was going to give you any major note, it would be add add life to that horse's leg. All right. The more minor notes are overlapping action on the on the feet, making sure that it's very clear as to which foot is doing what and adding just a little bit more life to the tongue. All right. But overall, this animation is really nice. So you should be very proud of it. Once again, congratulations on winning the 11 Second Club for this month. I look forward to seeing more. All right, good job.